Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to do 6.4, talking about similarity in triangles. Up on the screen, you will see the question that I'm going to ask you at the end in your exit quiz. To get started, I want to do a little bit of review. Just remind yourself what are similar polygons. We're going to talk about triangles today, but it's helpful to know everything about uh, similar polygons. Uh, two big things. They have congruent corresponding angles, and all pairs of corresponding lengths are proportional, meaning that they share a common ratio. Also meaning that you can find that ratio and write a giant proportion equation relating all lengths of corresponding parts together. The second thing that I want to reactivate in your head is those congruency statements like SSS that we spent so much time with improving with triangles. There were five of them. See if you can still remember all five. Pause the video and see if you can write down all those little initials of sides and angles correctly. Pause the video, see if you can do that. The list of five is right there. SSS, SAS, AAS, and ASA, along with our favorite hypotenuse leg. Now, there are some combinations in there that, or there are some combinations that exist that aren't in that list because they're not congruency statements. And we talked about those because we just ended up guessing, well, let's see if every single combination sets up a congruency. And we found out that uh, these two over on the right-hand side, SSA and AAA, did not support congruency. However, we did spend a little bit of time talking about the triple A situation where you have three congruent corresponding angles. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, specifically, I have a little sketchpad document right here where I have taken a large blue triangle and I have constructed a red line that is parallel to AC here. Now I can take this and manipulate it in however I want to and move that all around and shrink it and grow it, whatever. But you'll see that angle BDE, BAC are congruent to each other, BED and BCA are congruent to each other, and angle B is congruent to itself. So we have all three angles are locked in being congruent to each other in these two triangles, these large triangles and these small triangles. Now, just locking in those angles, that's how I did my construction. I then went and calculated distances. So I went and I calculated distances of all six sides of the small and large triangle. And then I did the ratios of small to big. And you'll notice that uh, those ratios stay the same no matter how I manipulate it. And if I move in a horizontal fashion, they stay relatively constant. But if I move this way and I shrink the size of that small triangle really small and the big triangle stays where it is, uh, those ratios change a lot. As likewise, if I move this parallel line, uh, the ratios all stay the same, but they do grow and shrink to their proportions. So this shows that just by locking in the three angles, I automatically get those proportions to work out properly. Well, the next thing we want to figure out is in dealing with those, if we lock in three angles, we know the shapes are similar. But is there anything in there that's extraneous or is it incomplete? So we want to make sure we got our bases covered on that. And I'll ask you to, again, recall another thing that we learned earlier on this year called the third angles theorem. And you should remember dealing with triangles, given that two of the three angles are congruent, what can be concluded? And the third angle theorem said, well, if I've got two of them that are congruent, well, all tri interior angles of triangles must add up to be 180, so therefore that third angle that's unknown must also be congruent to each other uh, because the other two are. So that means that if we just have two angles, that automatically gives us the third. So if we have two angles, we automatically get that third, and thus we have the similarity. So we only need to state that two angles are congruent, not three. And that's your theorem for the day, or actually a postulate. 
angle-angle similarity postulate. Simply stated, the angle-angle similarity postulate says that if you have two triangles and you're looking to prove that they're similar, if you've got two triangles with two pairs of corresponding congruent angles, then those triangles are similar to each other. Now that gives you that whatever proportion equation and a scale factor to work with. So it gives you a lot of information just by having two angles. It's an extremely powerful postulate. Let's use it. And the best way to use a similarity statement is in a proof. So off to the left, you'll see a drawing of a triangle inside of a triangle, kind of like my construction. And the only thing that's given is an angle measurement and another angle measurement, and we have to show that these two triangles are similar. So why don't you take a moment, copy down that picture in your notes, because this is an extremely common problem, um, and our job is to show that these two triangles are congruent. Sorry, not congruent, similar. Our job is to find that they're similar. So. If you want to take a shot at that, you can pause the video right now. It's only three steps. It's pretty easy. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to scroll right on ahead here, and you'll notice that ADE and ABC have the same measurement, so those are congruent through the definition of congruent angles. And the other one that's uh, obvious, but you just have to state it again, is that angle A is angle A by the reflexive property of congruence. Once you have those two angles, you bring in your bright, shiny, new postulate to work with here, uh, and just say that those two triangles are similar. Make sure that your notation is correct using that tilde and that you've listed the letters in the correct order. Um, we will call it double A similarity, similarity postulate. The next example I have is slightly more complex. Uh, you have this drawing. And the only thing that's given to you is that those opposing uh, sides are parallel to each other. Why don't you copy that on this drawing and the given information, set up a proof and see if you can do it yourself. Again, only three steps, but you're going to have to reach deep into your bag of tricks to do it. Okay, the first thing that uh, we like to go for whenever we see an intersection like that is that we know we get automatically vertical angles. So that's one of the very first things that we like doing. So we can say that uh, UVT is congruent to SVR through the vertical angle congruence theorem. Not just vertical angles, you gotta write congruency theorem, or at least abbreviate it because vertical angles by itself are a thing, not a theorem. Um, and then we gotta find another set of angles. And that's the tricky part. And if you look at SR and TU, they're parallel. And you can consider either SU or TR as a transversal to a set of parallel lines. Now, if there's a transversal to parallel lines, then we can say all sorts of things about exterior ang angles, uh, corresponding angles, alternate interior, uh, consecutive interior. Uh, you can write a number of congruency statements about S and U or T and R, but one way or another, you'll probably use the alternate interior angle con congruence theorem uh, to show one of those two things. So you only need one of those two statements, but the reasoning is the same for either. And once you have those two angles being congruent, you've got the AA similarity postulate to reach your conclusion there. The next example and final example I have for you today is one of the great classics, the flagpole problem, where you have some bystander looking up at a flagpole wondering how tall is it? In this case, we have a woman who stands five feet, four inches tall, casting a 40 inch shadow. And then she can go measure the shadow from the flagpole on the ground and she, someone measured that to be 50 feet. The question is how tall is the flagpole? And we're going to relate this to what we're doing today with uh, similar triangles. So I'd like you to take a moment and try to draw two triangles and everything you know about those two triangles. Pause the video, try to draw a picture to represent the problem. When you do that, uh, the, assumption, the assumption that you can make is that the sun the light from the sun is approaching 
her and the flagpole at the same angle. So that gives you that angle right there and that angle right there. And those two angles will be congruent to each other because the sun's an awfully long way off and uh, the angle of the light emanating from it comes and hits us all basically at the same angle. The other thing you can do that's nice and clean is draw a right angle down to the ground and that will create two angles that you know and then all of a sudden automatically you've got two similar triangles. Now if you weren't able to get the drawing, try to fill in the missing information. Pause the video, fill in the missing information, label everything up, and see if you can do that. If you do that, you get these numbers in there. Now notice some of them are in feet and inches, some of them are in feet, and some of them are in pure inches. So what I would suggest doing is, remember when we write a scale factor, we don't need them to be in the same units, we just need to label them as such. So um, let's take the small triangle and turn it all into inches. Turn, take the big triangle and work all in feet. And then obviously you have to write a proportion equation, just like we've been doing this entire chapter. And then it's a simple uh, cross products and solve. You get x equals 80, and that would be 80 feet. I don't know why the book didn't label that for you, but it is 80 feet. Up in the upper left-hand corner, you'll find your assignment. Secret code for today is 963. I'll see you later for 6.5.